testimony, and probably my wife's least favorite story, is when she graduated from college, I promised to take her to Hawaii because she had waited until we had children to go back to school to finish her degree. She diligently got it one class at a time, and she graduated, and her sister said, hey, next week is graduation, you got that Hawaii ticket? And I went, what Hawaii ticket? She goes, well, I've known you your whole married life. You always promised to take her to Hawaii. And I said, oh, that's right, I did. Ah, panic. So I scheduled a trip to Hawaii, took my wife to Hawaii. But before I went, because we hadn't planned the trip in advance, I worked like 15 hour days for six or seven days in a row and scheduled myself afterwards. And on the way back, had it planned out so that at the airport, we would land from Hawaii, I would change suitcases and get on another plane to go teach a seminar a couple hours later. So it was gonna be a stressful 10 days, and it was. And while we were gone, the last day on our Hawaii trip, we were on a catamaran out at sea with taking pictures, and I saw a big turtle, and I wanted a picture of it. So I grabbed a snorkel that was hanging on the rail and jumped in the water. <laughs> I got the picture, but the, the snorkel that I grabbed was full of snot from some kid that had some influenza. That's why it was hanging out on the rail, right? Well, to make a long story short, by the time I went down deep and had to clear my mask and swallowed half of his snot, evidently, I woke up the next morning with a hacking cough and sick as a dog. So by the time we get back to Atlanta, it's full-blown pneumonia, and I know it, my wife knows it, everybody knows it, but I'm ignoring it because I've got a seminar to teach, and I promised to be somewhere for other, these other doctors, etc. So I kiss my wife and jump on the plane with my new suitcase and, and set of clothes and head off to a two-day seminar in another city. The first night I teach, I hawk and cough and hack and cough all the way through the seminar. The first night I can't sleep because I can't lay down because of the pneumonia. So I get a handicap room with a plastic stool and turn the shower on steam and sit there and sleep in the chair like this all night just so I can breathe. Teach the seminar for half a day on Sunday, barely get through it, jump back on a plane, come back to Atlanta and go straight to the emergency room. Oxygen rate was 74. Some of you are doctors in the audience, you'll know that I should have been dead. That's what the ER doctor said. He said, I looked like I was walking dead. They put me in a tent. They said, you got full-blown pneumonia. Both lungs are involved. You need to be in this tent for 10 days. And I went, nope, I'm not staying here. If you keep me here, I'll probably die of infection. I'm checking out AMA. 18 pages of forms later and about an hour and a half argument with him and about a two-hour argument with my wife, I went home. I stopped by the office. I got oxygen. I got a laser. And I got my pulse electromagnetic therapy. I went home and put it in a chair. I forgot the laser wasn't charged up, so I couldn't turn it on. <laughs> Figure Murphy's Law, right? So I hit start for an hour on the pulse electromagnetic frequency. I stayed in the chair for 36 hours, except for what I remember of two or three times I got up to go to the bathroom. Drank chicken soup, drank a lot of water, and kept hitting start. Every time I'd wake up, I'd hit start. And I'd wake up and hit start. 36 hours later, I took a shower. I felt pretty good. It was time to go back to work. I stopped by the hospital to get a new x-ray and the doctor looked at me like I was a walking ghost again except this time I had my color and my spring in my step back and he said I thought I'd see you at your funeral and I said well not this week. I was perfect. I had 98% on my lungs, no fluid, good clean x-ray, good bill of health. I was back to work, worked about a 12 hour day the next day. That's my personal testimony. I can't believe that I didn't own the machine before that but I'd already had it at that point. Thank goodness I had it when I got home from that trip.